yo 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 what's up everybody thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic comic book creator interview it's your caper sarah cody and we're keeping it geekly with our new guest julian shaw we're here to break down one hell of an awesome new awesome spider recluse we're um from marvel voice vo excuse me marvel voices spider verse issue one recluse endangerment and so many other titles julian welcome to the stream how are you doing this morning i'm doing great and uh, how about yourself not too bad. I mean, I, I I spent the morning reading Captain America, Wakanda, uh, Miles Morales. I mean, this was a fantastic morning, and I, I have you to thank for that beautiful art on those. Uh, before oh, we you. dive into, uh, you know, your current work, let's begin with a nice introduction to who you are and how you uh, became an artist. Uh, my name is Julian Shaw. I am from Texas. Uh, I started art at a very young age. Um, I was probably like five my brother showed me this geometric cube that he had been learning in geometry and uh he you know where you draw the cube and you have the lines mm -hmm. and uh he showed me how to do it and when i saw him do it i was like what it blew my mind because it was coming off the page yeah and i was like how it's like witchcraft and so i'm just drawing <laughs> all these cube things i'm drawing cars there the wheels are cubes everything is cubes and i'm trying to make it bounce off and then uh you know i had a very uh my grandmother she used to show me these uh uh animes it was nasuka in the valley of the wind and it just had a, such an impact on my life and um you know i never seen a character like die like a cartoon like mm -hmm. character die on like the screen and so that i was like what is this emotion it was such a strange thing but yeah uh so yeah that's pretty much my upbringing art i just really and then I had the, the image comics. My mother had a roommate and she uh, he um, wanted to be an artist as well. Uh, he, unfortunately, he, he didn't make it. But, you know, the, the image boomed. There were so many creators that wanted to come out of that era. And I was lucky enough to have one of them, you know, that was uh, roommates with my mom. And he drew a Wolverine in front of me. And I was like, man, this is so sick, you know, and he gave me a <laughs> bunch of Spawn comics, you know, like some of the first issues and you know, I remember there's a distinctly there was a, a spawn where uh, there's a bunch of heroes like putting their hands outside that uh, that jail cell. Mm -hmm. And I, I still remember to this day that that image, it was so like it was so cool. I was like, man, this is sick. So but yeah, that's pretty much how it started. <laughs> When you started getting into comics, were you doing a lot of like early drawing drawings of Spawn, or you know? Oh what was... yeah, of course, yeah? man. Everybody's <laughs> copying. It. I'm putting my uh, the paper up to the the sliding uh, the glass door and trying to trace trace you know, for the ninja... sunlight. Yes, yeah, like Ninja Turtles and Spawn <laughs> yes. and stuff, man. And I was like, yeah, this is it right here. So when did you really start diving into like sequential art? Man, it was probably yeah, because I did a lot of pinup stuff. You know, and I was doing a lot of studying. Uh, first, I wanted to be a more traditional artist. And then I saw like the work of like Adam Hughes. And I was like, wait, you can mix both of these together because, you know, he's got a more like a traditional kind of feel mm -hmm. and more realistic. And I was trying to do that for a while. And then uh, I was doing these uh, this little uh, battle artist thing on DeviantArt. And, you know, we would try to like go up against each other and try to like see who has the better art. And then... <clears throat> Uh, one of the guys from that, he asked me to draw a, a comic for him, which was his creator-owned uh, Pink Wing and uh, Prime Controller comic. And I was so nervous, you know, because it, it, I think everyone, when they're starting out, they're like, man, I, I do I have what it takes? And so he believed in me and, you know, I, I did the comic and I just built up so much confidence after that. And he kept coming back and he really wanted to, uh, you know, give me money. And I was like, oh man do I, do I deserve this you know <laughs> you know like, because it's like ah oh, you know in hindsight everything is like oh it looks awful but mm -hmm. it gave me it really helped build the confidence in me to to then do more and more storytelling no that is that's awesome and I bet you look back now and I bet he looks back to like I can't believe uh, he, he was considering doing this for free at this point like yeah <laughs> so oh go ahead no 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 I, yeah I'm extremely uh grateful to uh Ramel Hill, you know. No, oh, that's that's awesome. So that's some of your earliest comic book. Uh, when did you start diving into uh, working for Marvel? Well, you know, as I was doing, I was doing this other project called uh, Project Gnosis, and uh, I, I was doing the sequential stuff for them. And, you know, it was never in my mind to be part of the big two or anything like that, because I, 
I think I would always get disappointed if, you know, if you never made it. So I'm just doing my own thing. I'm trying to make money. You know, I had just quit my job like maybe two years prior to that and was full time art. So I'm mm -hmm. like grinding every day, like, you know, hey, do you need to work? Do you, you know, what, what do you need? And then uh, I got an email, you know, from Marvel's uh, uh, talent uh, uh, people. And they said, hey, do you have any work to show? And I was like, here it is. And, you know, I fill out the paperwork. They were like, I'll get you in touch with an editor. And then the editor hit me up and I did the Marvel Voices number one, you know, and um, that was kind of the end of it. So uh, what was that book you said? Uh, what was the title? Uh, for the Project Gnosis or uh, the... Yeah, the, um, uh, who's the writer for that? Is it Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Paul on the show uh, oh, maybe really? like a month. Yeah, what a small... When you said that, I was like, hold on. That sounds familiar. About the speedster, right? Who is just like guns to the wall, just like yes, killing yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. What is That's so awesome, man. So you use that uh, to kind of show Marvel what you had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dude, I that's so cool. those pages and... You know, they were like, you don't even have to do any test pages. You know, <laughs> here, here's an editor. And I was like, whoo, thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you. Yeah, I, man, I remember going through, because I have, uh, what, I think uh, three issues or two at least. And going through and be like, this art is just phenomenal. So that was you? Uh, I, I think there's there was two other artists. Uh, Kyle Petchok might have been one of them. And mm -hmm. I know I'm in there, though. And then there's like a cover that I had done for him as well and uh yeah he's a he's a great guy you know to work with you know gorgeous work gorgeous work so how did it feel when you first started working for marvel i mean from the very start working your way up you 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 know you got that call back and they're like we don't even want no test pages like here's an editor you know you start work like how did that feel um at first you know i the first thing i did was i showed my wife you know she's still in bed they send me the email i show my wife the email she gives me a hug and a kiss and i'm you know, I'm over the moon, you know, now mm -hmm. I gotta, now I gotta show up and I gotta work, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, my, my, uh, work ethic has always been like to just get it done. No excuses. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to hear excuses at the end of the day. So I've always just, you know, gotten straight into it. And, um, it's been like that ever since any, any job that they ever give me, I'm going to do it a hundred percent you know regardless of the timeline you know i've done a comic in four days before you know i it it doesn't matter so but yeah I, i've always been a, a really about you know the i think with these younger guys too is that it's about the drive you mm -hmm. know if you have the drive to get it done the talent doesn't mean anything you have to nobody wants to hear the excuses <laughs> i mean it's a harsh reality but yeah yeah, well, I mean, you could be super talented, but if you're not getting the work done, you know, what's going on? Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> and uh, I, I respect that mentality a lot, too. I have kind of a similar, like, look on things. Like, you know, for me, I always look at, you know, yeah, I might put a lot of work in, but I'm the only one who can grow this brand, right? And like you as yeah. an artist, you're the only person who can grow your work because you're the one that does it. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, I had the chance to read some of these titles, Captain America, Simple of Truth, Issue 5, Wakanda, Wakanda Issue 4, Marvel Voices, Infinity Comic, Issue 18. Some awesome work that you've been a part of. Uh, how was it working on all of those titles? I mean, some big names that you've been a part of. And I mean, not this isn't your first time working with a spider either. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's taken me a while to get really used to it and like understand that you know there's such a, a rich history behind a lot of these characters mm -hmm. and um you know kind of taking my own vision of how i i want things to look and having the confidence to go forward and do it but at this you know the same breath is that knowing that they are confident that i can do this you know so um i'm over the moon every day you know having to be able to create something new for people to get excited you know my whole mission is it's not about the money or the prestige of like being a creator i want to inspire people to to draw regardless mm -hmm. you know uh, i want that same feeling where i was you know tracing you know spawn pictures you know on the, <laughs> the, the glass door i want that same mm -hmm. uh energy you know for other people you know and, and if anybody is, has the passion to draw or anything like that i will gladly help them you know i i've i've tried to to be you know because i feel like sometimes it's so narrow and people don't have the 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 vi they, they don't have the pathway you know to get into this business or there's everyone's story is different in how they got in and because there's not a guidebook 
mm -hmm. know, you just have to just go out there. And if you are lucky enough to, to get the call, you just, you have to be able to answer. Don't even hesitate. And uh, that's where, you know, the practice and the hard work comes into play because that yeah. leads you up right when you're ready to take that call, you're, you're ready to jump on it. So, you know, with working with so many uh, big named, uh, you know, characters and, and writers as well, uh, what does that creation process look like for you? Do they typically give you the script and, and have like kind of just a set idea of what they want or do they let you take the wheel and run with it? Yeah, most of the time they, they, they send me the script. I, I look at it. I uh, send them thumbnails of what I'm thinking as far as like visually. Uh, they have their own personal feedback. Uh, I tend to, I, I, I want to talk to the writer about it a little bit, you know, just to, to get the vibe of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's it from there, you know, and every, every writer is different in how they approach things. And um, some are a little more open and some are more, very more sp like specific, like I want this angle and this way and, you know, and I, I try to, to like either kind of persuade them to make it, you know, work a little better for, for what I want visually mm -hmm. and also to help them uh, make the script shine, you know. So I, I am curious, I mean, when you get ready to work on some of these comics, like what, what does your routine look like? Do you listen to any like sort of, you know, uh, playlist or do you, uh, you know, put anything to put you in a certain type of mood? Like what's what's kind of your routine look like? Uh, normally in the morning, I, you know, I get up pretty early. I make my, you know, daughter, you know, breakfast and, you know, I get my wife out the door and, you know, then I come, I make some coffee. Of mm -hmm. course, you got to have that caffeine. And then uh, <clears throat> I go to a, a discord called uh, Loraverse and uh, it's just a, a group of creators that are all there. And there's something about like talking to, to people and, you know, uh, they're all creating at the same time and just talking about the projects that they're working on and stuff. And it just, it's, it's more of a motivator because, you know, sometimes when you're sitting there and you're listening to YouTube and, you know, it's, it get kind of stagnant, but when you're having that conversation and everybody's having the same struggle or, you know, they might need help on something and we're just kind of just throwing around ideas. It's such a great, you know, atmosphere to be in. It's like going to the gym, but for mm -hmm. artists, you know, or being in a studio. It's, uh, you know, uh, birds of a feather flock together, right? Surrounding exactly, your, yourself with like-minded individuals help catapult you to greatness. And it's kind of similar like what, with what I do. When I see all my friends, you know, uh, killing it with their interviews, getting great lineups, it motivates me to want to go harder with my content creation as well. And I, th I, th I think that is awesome. So let's, let's get to business. Let's talk spiders. We're here to talk about Recluse, which is a brand new spider to the Spider-Verse. Uh, in a dystopian future where Electro controls the power grid. This is dropping April 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you got uh, a hard and... date? I didn't even get a hard date. I just started oh. with April. <laughs> you know, I, I did a little bit of homework this morning. I want to make oh, sure I, I was on point. I, now I know. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, how does it feel? You, you, I mean, going into Marvel is one thing, but creating a brand new character. That is, Man. holy crap. How, how, how is that for you? man i know when i they, they showed it i got tears in my eyes you know <laughs> you know it's it's been such a long road you know for me um you know i used to i because i live in the dfw area which has like some of the longest commute times i would drive an hour early to work and sit down at the in the break room and i would draw for an hour before work every day and then when i would go home i put on a pot of coffee and i would draw for three hours you know so it's like every single day I would do that and to thinking about that to now being able to say that you know I have uh, I have co-created a spider person for Marvel I will always have that with me and I got you know two I'll have two little girls by the end of this month and it's a female you know African-American mm -hmm. spider person you know, something that they can say that their dad, you know, made. It's it's so awesome. It's, it's such a great experience. So what goes into designing a character for Marvel? I mean, did you have to, and I know you said you co-created, but um, but like what, what goes into this? Like, did you have to come up with a ton of different designs to show them? Uh, actually, I was doing another comic. Like, before, like <laughs> so I was doing another comic and they were like, hey, do you want to do this? And I was like, absolutely. Give, it, give yeah. me all the pages, you know? And so I kind of bounced the, the workout. And uh, so I got all my resources together. I was like, what is something that's going to be, you have a unique silhouette, you know, something that if you see the silhouette, you're going to know exactly who it is. 
you know, and, you know, having the athletic build, she's a, was a former gymnast. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted to give this very sleek um, uh, design to it. So, yeah, I just uh, I, I got all the resources together. I gave him a couple options and then I, I really kind of leaned more towards one particular one, which is the one that we eventually got just because, you know, I had a bunch of designs, but the one that I really liked, I put in color. So I was like, you got to pick this one right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I uh, what let's talk a little bit about her uh, design as well. So uh, the first thing I, I love uh, the, the hair that was like, it's so noticeable. Is that what you mean by the silhouette? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's, it's a. a a ball braids and it's a mm -hmm. uh, it's more of an african-american uh hair design and it's like their capsules that are over it you know so i i, I kind of you know i love the way that it kind of flows and just the the look of the hair and all that stuff and it's just like, it's one of those elements like you would have for like a cape right with mm -hmm. superman it's something to help with the motion of the character and i, I think also i think it just looks cool <laughs> Looks badass. Uh, so the name, did uh, did you have any like hand in the name or did you know what, what the name was going to be before you designed it? Originally, the name was Anon Z, but then they later on after uh, they changed the name to Recluse. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's a, that that name is stands out. <laughs> uh, so was Marvel, they, did they impose like any like this has to be included within this design like did they you know uh because the eyes and, and the web you know those, those are like kind of traditional with like the spider-man style but was there anything they wanted in particular man let me tell you um devin was uh, such a great editor he, he really just let me do whatever i wanted and oh, every time so i'd cool. show him something he was like man this is badass and um it just gave me more and more confidence to just <laughs> you know take more risks and i was like oh i'm loving it i'm loving it and i'm like i can't believe that you know somebody would just let me do whatever i want you know <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, this is so awesome so coming out april 12th uh, with Electro controlling the power grid, can you tell, I mean, I know we can't really talk too much about the story, but is there anything about the character we can talk about? Like maybe a name or any, anything in between, or is that kind of still behind the spoiler? Uh, it's a little bit behind the spoilers, but she's more of an activist type of character, mm -hmm. uh, kind of rebelling, trying to, to build a better world and, you know, kind of just uh, in opposition to Electro, who was like, uh, wants a monopoly, you know, obviously. And, uh, yeah man i'm i'm really looking forward to it you know i don't want to spoil too much yeah, yeah, yeah i get, that, I get, I get too much away you know but I'm, I'm very excited for people to see it i i really am this is something that is, is a milestone in my career and you know everyone they you know that i talk to is, is very excited Oh, that's awesome. So can we talk a little bit about Marvel voice uh, vo excuse me Marvel voices spider-verse uh, like how is this playing into that um <clears throat> So I know that they're bringing because it was weird because when I saw the cover, I was like, Are there is this the book that I'm in? Because I didn't even know the book I was in originally. <laughs> and I had to ask, you know, and then I saw the cover for it. And I was like, OK, I see three silhouettes. And I say, like, OK. And then uh, I saw the covers, which I didn't see the covers until they showed them. And uh, I was like, oh, they put her on a cover. I didn't even realize. And then along with uh, Jason Lowe, who uh, I've I've also seen on the the Marvel Unlimited uh, app and he's done us a, a bunch of like x-men comics as well very talented guy and uh me and him are both on that 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 one cover and i was like man that's that's crazy and that's um, awesome yeah hopefully this won't be the last time you see her you know who knows <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say we have uh, Into the Spider or Across the Spider-Verse uh, 2 coming out soon. Maybe we might see her pop in a third uh, one. Wouldn't that be something? Man, oh man, I would be so pumped. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter where I see her, you know, because mm -hmm. it, and then I thought about it too. It's like the first thing that popped in my head when I created this character was like, I'm going to get my favorite artist to draw this character. I'm going to commission them to all draw the, the recluse character and I'm going to have my wall filled with it. Yeah, <laughs> that is so cool. So what's next for you in 2023 do you have any other projects you're working on either for marvel or personally uh i am currently i do have another marvel project lined up after uh i'm still doing uh, the unlimited uh web comics right now uh i was doing moon girl uh with stephanie williams um that has one more issue to come out and man i really love that one too as well and uh after that i have more 
spider stuff you know it's like that's all i can really say about it but yeah i'm, I'm really excited everything is going kind of my way at this point which is very strange hey i mean it's it's it might as well run with it right uh, you, yeah, you worked yeah, yeah. so hard to get up here fork forklift certified as well oh uh, of course man let's course. go man <laughs> man i honestly i because i worked for a forklift company and mm -hmm. they would just bring in the brand new forklifts and so i was certified on all the forklifts all the way up to like the huge like track mobile you know you know forklifts all that stuff man so i'm pretty on confident <laughs> yeah sorry i had ambulances drive by i kind of live on a major road and sometimes they know they're like oh he's in an interview let me uh Keep the sirens a couple of yeah, times when we yeah. go by his house. So, uh, Julian, you mentioned earlier for anyone who uh, is, is is wanting to learn more about this, you know, you you want to you want to help them with that. Uh, that's great because my one of my biggest uh, focuses with this podcast is actually asking for a piece of advice for anyone that's out there uh, who who's wanting to get into creating comics or, or mm -hmm. make them. So, for I, I think right now would uh, a, a good one to capitalize on would be for any writers out there looking to work with an artist. What would you say would be some of the biggest like things to do when approaching one to make sure it goes smooth. I, I believe you have to have like communication. You got to get along and you, you kind of have to have like a, a vibe. You got to have a friendship where you can throw ideas around. And, you know, if one person's controlling everything, then it just to me from an artist experience, when I have had that happen, like, let's say, for instance, like, oh, you wrote this in the script. I'm going to draw it as is. Mm -hmm. And. And then they say, oh, uh, can you add these extra things? It's going to create conflict. So I think that you have to be able to allow them to have the creative freedom to make some choices because what I see in my head is not necessarily what is going to happen on the page and it's a process. So I think that's the same. It should be the same for like writing and creating something. If you see something in your head, then you need to just draw yourself because that's not part of the collaborative process. Mm -hmm. so, is so is it... Is it is it hard like when you come up with a really cool idea and the writer's like oh, i don't know about this <laughs> um they there comes some trust you know you don't want to get too artsy with it right because mm -hmm. then if you get too artsy with it you might not reach the, the broader audience you know like this is like too much i don't understand it you know so i i think that you know you really gotta hone it in a little bit and meet somewhere in the middle no, I think that is some sound advice. Julian, thank you so much for swinging by, breaking down so many of your awesome titles that you've worked on, and uh, Marvel Voices, Spider-Verse Issue 1, Recluse Endangerment. Get that at your local comic shop April 12th, guys. Make sure you pre-order it. Put it on your pull list. Do whatever you can to get this book. It looks fantastic, and I can't wait to see what Recluse does up against Electro controlling the power grid. This was an awesome chat. Julian, once again, thank you yeah. so much uh, for swinging by and making this happen. Everyone watching, I hope you all have a lovely Monday, but most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.